Hi, my name is Megan. Welcome to our latest Escape Room series, which is all about the fruit of the spirit. Now, this is not fruit that you can eat like pineapples and apples. It's a different kind of fruit. The Bible says that as we grow in our faith, we can let the Holy Spirit transform us, which means to change us, to be more like Jesus. That's what is meant by fruit. Now, I need your help to solve the puzzles and uncover the clues to find out more. We're going to be reading the Bible together and finding out what it means to be a follower of Jesus and how we do that in our everyday lives. Let's start by reading the Bible together. It's just two verses in the New Testament from the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. Oh, oh no. I've just been told that a bug has eaten a word on our database. Let's watch the video to find out what's missing. But the fruit of the Spirit is joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Oh dear, what is the missing word? What fruit of the Spirit is it? I need your help to uncover the missing data so we can find out. Can you help me? I think it's time to enter the escape room. Thank you for visiting and reminding our kids escape room. You have three minutes to find the clues and unlock the words. Look high and look low, solve puzzles. But don't take too long. You must solve the puzzles and find the clues to restore the data before the time runs out. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go. Okay, oh, what have we got here? Okay, well, there's a table here. Um, there's some friendship bracelet kits, um, a family portrait, and there's a team medal. Oh, now what do they have in common? Is it that you can wear them? Okay, no buzzer, so that is not correct. And I guess you can wear the bracelets and medal, but you wouldn't wear a, a family portrait. It's too big. Um, what else is the connection? Do you know? Uh, what about people being together? Oh, great. That means it's correct. Okay, what's next? Well, we've got a screen over here with some pictures on. Let's see. Uh, there is a picture of Joseph and his brothers. There's a picture of Moses at the top of a mountain. And then the last one is a picture of an empty tomb. Now, what do all these pictures have in common? Uh, could it be that they're all stories from the Bible? Okay, no buzzer. It, it is a correct answer, but it's not the answer we are looking for. What else could it be? Well, Joseph and Moses are in the Old Testament and Jesus' time on the earth is written in the New Testament. But what connects them? What about they all put others first and wanted the best for them? Oh, great. That means it's correct. Joseph was treated so badly by his brothers when he was a young boy. When they came to him asking for food, not realising it was him at the time, he could have turned around and turned them away and even had them killed. But he chose to forgive them and help them. Moses led the Israelites for 40 years in the desert. He could have given up, especially as they were always arguing amongst each other and not obeying God. But he chose to keep leading them as God had called him to do with compassion. Finally, the empty tomb reminds us that Jesus came to die on the cross and rise up again to rescue us because he cares deeply for us and wants the best for us and the best is life with God forever. Okay, back to it. Final puzzle is a word puzzle. Great. Let's see. Uh, it's, it's a very short one. Um, four letters. Can you guess what it is? Uh, let's start with let's start with a vowel. Uh, what, what about an A? Okay, so there's no A. What about a U? Oh, no U. An E? Um, no. Oh, we have one of those. Great. Uh, so another vowel. Um, let's try O. Nice. There's an O. Have you got it? I think I have, but let's do one last letter to make sure. Is there a V? Uh, yes, it, it's the word love. <laughs> Great, that means it's correct. Well done. Escape room complete. 
Congratulations, you have solved the puzzles and found the clues in the given time. You have restored the lost data. You may now exit the escape room. Let's reboot the database and put in the missing words. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Well done. Let's find out more about God's love in our Bible reading today. It's from Luke 15, starting at verse 1. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to him, and the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them a parable. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbours, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I found my sheep that I lost. So, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Shepherding was a very common job in Jesus' time. The people who heard him speak knew how hard a shepherd worked and how dedicated they were to their flock. A shepherd cared for every single one of their sheep. It didn't matter how many they had, whether it was 10 or 100, a good shepherd knew each of their sheep by name. And so every night they would count them to make sure not one of them had wandered off because they knew the dangers and what could happen to them if they did. So they would risk their lives to go and find them. Did you know that this is how God feels about us? He loves us so much that He sent His only Son, Jesus, to die for us. The Bible tells us that the punishment for sin is death. Death means being separated from God. But when Jesus, who was without sin, died on the cross, He took on all the sin we have ever done and will ever do and paid the price for it on our behalf, which means that those who have asked Jesus to be their Lord and Saviour, we will be with Him forever. This is how much God loves us. When we think of love, we normally think of it as a feeling. You might describe it as really liking something a lot, well, that's kind of right because God really does like each one of you a lot. He made you. While that is true, it's important to remember that God's love is more than just a feeling of liking something or someone a lot. A good way to describe God's love comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 to 7. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous. It does not brag and it is not proud. Love is not rude, it is not selfish and does not become angry easily. Love does not remember wrongs done against it. Love takes no pleasure in evil, but rejoices over the truth. Love patiently accepts all things. It always trusts, always hopes and always continues strong. That's a really amazing way to describe love. But here's a simpler way to describe love that's found in 1 John 4, verse 16. And so we know the love that God has for us and we trust that love. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God lives in him. This says that God is love. That means that when we have Jesus in us, we have love in us. As we grow in Jesus, we grow in the love of God. Love means we put the needs of others ahead of our own. It means we are willing to give even when someone can't repay us. That doesn't just mean things or money, but, but time too. It means we are willing to help even when we are not asked. It means doing things not so that you will get something back in return. But importantly, we don't do these things with a grumpy attitude or we have no choice. We do them because we want to help. We want to show Jesus' love to others. But you are not on your own. The Holy Spirit will empower you. 
That means that you can do it with the Holy Spirit's help. That is why love is the first fruit of the Spirit. The more we get to know Jesus, the more the Holy Spirit helps us to love others. Just as Jesus loved everyone he met, we can love our neighbours, those in our schools, our clubs, those we meet at church and our friends and family. When we live by his Holy Spirit, we will be like Jesus and do things out of love for others instead of just doing things for ourselves. How could you show Jesus' love to those around you this week? It's time for me to go now. Thanks for your help today. Join me next time as we solve the puzzles and find the clues to unlock the Bible verses. Till then, bye!